hey guys welcome to another video so in this video we are going to experiment with main actor and see how that works so let's create a simple example uh, we'll just have a hello world text on the screen and we will create a task that will run when the view loads so let's first create two functions we'll call them test1 and test2 and these functions are asynchronous functions and we'll just print out if they are running on the main thread or not and now in the task we will just call these functions test1 and test2 and obviously we will need to use await keyword because they are synchronous functions and by using a wait, we just mean that we want to wait for this function to finish. As you guys can see on the console, we have test1 false, test2 false. That means both of these functions are running on a background thread and not the main thread. Now let's make our function test2 run on the main actor. So to do that, we'll just append at main actor keyword and after running the code you can see now test1 runs on the non main thread and test2 runs on the main thread because it's marked with a main actor and if we reverse the order of the test1 and test2 so we call test2 first and then test1 you can see both print true that means when we are using the main actor for test2 and then calling test1 uh, the system do doesn't need to switch the context because test1 is a, can run on the main actor as well as the global background actor so calling test1 doesn't mean that we will always run on the non main thread we could run on main thread or a background thread but for test2 it is guaranteed that it will run on the main thread now let's try to see if we can make a state and assign that state inside the function test1 and test2 and see if the if the state change happens on the main thread or the background thread so we'll assign the name in the test1 function as well as the test2 function and we will just create a did set block in the state and that will let us see what's happening when the state is set so as you can see did set is false that means it's not running on the main thread when calling test1 function but when calling test2 function it's running on the main thread because we are calling that from the main actor now let's try to see if we can make the name state change happen through the main actor so as you can see we got an error saying that property name isolated to global actor main actor cannot be called from a background context because we are running inside a task and that runs in the global context we cannot make a change in the state that we just marked as main actor from that context but we can do so from the test2 function because that is marked main actor as well and running in the main context so that there is no problem assigning the name because both contexts are same and test1 is also in the global context because uh, the containing task is in the global context
let's put some breakpoints and see what's going on so as you can see the first breakpoint when calling test one is hit when we are on the cooperative thread the background thread so as you can see it's a serial default quality of service cooperative thread And let's see uh, if what happens if we put the breakpoint in the dead set of the state property. So as you can see, we are in the global context. Now we switch to main context, and you can see we are running in the main queue and when we calling when we are assigning the property we remain on the main context the main queue but obviously we cannot assign this property from test one because that is running on the global context so let's try this uh, with an observed property so what happens if we have a model declared in a class that is an observable object and we have a published property on the model let's also uh, have the assignment of name in the test one function while using the model and we'll again put dead set uh, block in the name property so that we can find out what's happening when it, the assignment happens so we'll put the break point in dead set as well so as you can see we are running in the global context on the default QS cooperative queue we are still on the global context and we are going to assign the property as you can see we are still running on the global context and that results in a warning because we are publishing the, these changes from a background thread because we are still in the global context we are not running on the main queue at, at all so now let's see what happens when we call test 2 as you can see we switch to main context because the method is marked with main actor and as you can see there is no error in assignment of the property because that happens on the main context that means main queue so the problem is when calling test 1 function so let's see what happens if we mark our class model with main actor does that solve the issue so let's run our code again and let's saying I think something has gone wrong because the thread stack on the left is not right so let's try to run it again okay so as you can see we are running on the background queue back global context and when assignment happens we are still on the background context global context running on a background queue so main actor doesn't really switch
to the main queue when an assignment happens. So we ha still have that problem that when you assign the property in test1 function that's running on the global context, we are publishing changes from the background queue and not the main queue. So even if we like have main actor in the published property, it doesn't help. So main actor doesn't isn't automatically like making the property run on, on the main queue. So what we need to do here. So what we need to do is we need to create a function to assign the property. So we'll create a function named let's say update name and in the update name we will assign the name to the published property name. Also, instead of assigning the property directly, we will call the update name function on the model to try to update the name. So if we run our code again, we can see we start with the global context because of the task uh, block. And when the property assignment happens, you can see we are still on the background context. We haven't switched to the main queue. So that is because this function is a normal function. The update name is not an asynchronous function and we are not waiting for that function call to finish. So that means the actor is not performing its queue operation. So it's not queuing the task to be performed on a main queue. But if we make it asynchronous and call it with an await keyword, you can see now did set is called on the main queue. So the main actor that we have on the class actually worked and now we can assign the, we can call the function from the global context and it will automatically switch to the main context and run on the main thread as you can see on the left and assign the property and move on. So that means we can create a synchronous function and call it via a wait keyword and that will automatically switch the context from global context to the main context and we will not have to do anything else but if we don't do this await key uh, waiting for with an await keyword and have the function synchronous and not asynchronous then actor main actor cannot work it requires the update function to be asynchronous and there should be an await keyword before calling the function. So because actors work with a message queue, so whenever you call the function with an await keyword, that method call is queued on the main actor. And whenever the main queue is free, it fetches that method call that is in the message queue and performs that task. So that is why await and async is required for main actor to work. So that's all I had for this video. Do like, comment and share this video with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.